Hello and welcome back to episode 132 of Talk of Fame podcast with their host, Kaima Tigni, and I'm very excited to have on singer-songwriter and actress Ava Morris. Thank you so much for coming on, Ava. I'm so excited to chat with you. So excited to talk to you. Yeah, so like, you recently came out with an EP called Loveless. Like, what is, like, the meaning behind the EP? Because I know you got, you came out with that, like, last month or, right, or this month. Yes, it's, I think it's been out for about a month now, um, which is crazy. I feel like I've been sitting on this EP for, like, ever because I recorded it in July of 2022, so last summer. But um, Loveless is basically kind of just a bunch of me spitballing ranting about my exes in music um to put it funny but no really this ep means so much to me because it's kind of about like my journey through kind of finding being okay with being by myself and not having to rely on other people for my source of happiness and just kind of being okay with not having someone there all the time that's kind of where the term i came up with like loveless kind of comes from because like I may be, I may not have a boyfriend, like no love, but I still have a lot of self-love to go off of. Like, how do you handle like being kind of like relying on yourself, like basically not relying on others? Because like, I know like for some people, they'd rather rely on getting a boyfriend or they rely on friends or family. Like, how do you kind of rely on yourself mostly? I think it kind of, it took me, I had to get to like my lowest point in order to kind of rise up out of the ashes, if you will. But um, I think I was just kind of tired of people taking advantage of me and kind of just like being kind of something that people can kick around. And I just decided to kind of work on myself and prioritize taking time to myself. I really love like some of my things is I love to read. I love skincare, obviously writing songs. I take time to go like do yoga and like center myself. And I just... um, it's good. I have a lot of, I have a few very close friends that I love very, very much and hold very dear to me. And I think that that's very important as well, like quality over quantity, mm-hmm. sort of having like a huge group of friends. I did cut off a lot of people, but I think it was for the better because they were toxic and not good for me whatsoever. And through that, I just came to be very happy with who I am and people that I'm around. Yeah, like, I like what you said earlier, you're like, you like to read skincare, like, I literally, literally, like, do the exact same thing, like, whenever I'm not doing work, I'm always, like, reading, because I'm, like, a readaholic, I'm always yeah. reading, like, I'm always, like, hopping one book from the next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it, it's so, it's so good, just work, just being able to, like, take care of yourself, and just kind of, like, disassociate for a little bit, and, like, nothing really matters it's it's mm-hmm. it's really nice it's therapy <laughs> yeah exactly and like do you have like a favorite book or like are you reading anything right now okay I just finished reading Fight Club because I, I love the movie and I needed to read the book um one of my favorite books of all time is kind of it's kind of like a classic it's uh The Picture of Dorian Gray mm-hmm. by Oscar Wilde so it's super old book but I I love that book it brings me to tears <laughs> Yeah, like, I love so much, like, reading that, like, I just finished, um, what did I just finish? Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. I'm legit, like, now on the light we carry by Michelle Obama. Like, I'm legit, like, after, like, okay. I finish it, next day, I legit start reading a new book. Like, I'm always, like, whenever I finish, I legit, like, just start reading the day after. In different That's ways. impressive. I mean, honestly, I kind of take a break. I'm not as avid as you are, but respect to you, I wish I could be, because I... I wish I could make more time than I do, but I still love. <laughs> yeah, like even like I do sometimes where like I just like start reading a book and just don't read for weeks. Or like when I finish a book, I just don't start for a couple of days. I'm like, oh, well, I should get reading. Like this kind of like I'm bored. Like I need to some- do something for myself rather than be on my- like doing work and be on my phone the whole time. Mm-hmm. I think my biggest problem is I always buy books and I don't read them. So yeah, much I'm the same it's exact way. Noble. It's it's so funny. And yeah, I, just, like, I legit have like seven books next to my desk. I still <laughs> have yet to read. I get it. Well, now it's your sign to start reading them. <laughs> I know. Like it's like I hate like reading book like million books at the same time. I'd rather read one at a time than go over a million books and forget what I'm reading about. Yeah. 
And like I like going back to like your EP, like how long like did it take you to write your EP and like kind of like sing it? Because I know like you like sang like you kind of recorded it in July 2022, right? Yes. So it was really honestly, I feel like it probably took me all of them were written at very different times, which I feel like was necessary for me because that that's another reason why the EP is so personal to me is because these are real experiences and songs that I wrote sitting on my at my piano just with tears streaming down my face after I found out like a guy cheated on me. Like they're very in the moment, very real. And I think like, so I think I wrote, the first song that I wrote for the EP was a song called Only One Lying. And that was probably in, October 2021 so it's been more than a year that these have been like going um and all of them in different ways like some of them just like in one go some of them took like weeks on end to like finish but they're all they're all very unique and very fun mm-hmm. like, like, how many, yeah. like um singles and stuff are on the album like is there like a couple or you just kind of made like a, a lot of songs to the album so the EP is five songs, one song, and then, well, okay, it's six tracks. Five of them are individual songs. One of them is like a sped up version because that kind of went like viral on TikTok. So I was like, okay, I'll just put it out. So yeah, there's five five songs that all kind of take you through everything. Ooh, and like, like I know there's five songs. I know like di- every different song has a different meaning. Like I know like if I had to choose some like a song that's my favorite I literally like pick all like I know this is probably gonna be a hard question for you at least I know it would be a hard question for me personally but do you have a favorite song or uh, a song that meant to, the most to you on the EP oh, this is a really hard question because I I love all of them very much um I think before production so pre-production favorite like song that I wrote and I had written from like a songwriter's perspective, I loved Loveless, the song Loveless. Um, but once all of them were produced, um, I fell in love with Help Yourself and Pretty People Problems, the super upbeat ones, because I love just the guitars and everything just like kind of made the song complete, I guess, like something was missing. Mm-hmm. Like was like Loveless like your first like single since like it's like the name of the album like did you release any singles mm-hmm. before the album came out to like, I did, like- but it wasn't loveless loveless wasn't even a concept brought up I didn't tell any of my friends what it was called like everything was very super serious when I was like surprise this is loveless um because I released help yourself first and then I released pretty people problems and tragic so I released three before the other two and the whole thing was put together and out into the world um but yeah, so Loveless wasn't really like a thing until it was out. So mm-hmm. it was kind of a surprise. <laughs> yeah, like I know like, like some artists, they do usually like to come out with the album song, like the name of the album song first before they re- release the album so they can like kind of like showcase like yeah. a whole album. So I was kind of curious like which ones you came out first. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. No, I'm very secretive. <laughs> I like keeping people on their toes. So yeah, like for me, like I like keeping secrets, but then I'm also bad at it. Like I'm horrible at keeping secrets. Because like, it's like inside me, like I'm like, oh, I can't hold it any longer. Like I just yeah. is horrible. But then I'm like, oh, I, this is the best secret I ever have in my life. Like, oh yeah, I had. I think I did pretty well with keeping these songs kind of because all my friends obviously know all the things that I do and are very supportive through everything um but I me there's like this this hill like a giant like mountain I guess not really a mountain but like it's kind of like an elevated landmark in Illinois as elevated as you can get and it's really pretty for sunsets and I took my best friend there and I was like by the way, here are my five songs that I'm going to come out with. And she was like, oh, my God, I had no idea. So it was like, it was really cool to be able to do that. Because I was like, yes, I got him. I surprised you. <laughs> you had like, no was that before like, you announced it? Where it was like, oh, like, yeah, here, here we go. Like, here's some music for you. Well, this was when this was in like August. So right after I got back from California from like recording and everything, um, cause I didn't tell them why I was going to California. Cause they don't, I'm, I'm always there. So they're like, okay, 
bye like go <laughs> so I'm just like I'm like okay and then I came back and I was like oh yeah by the way like I was gone for like a month because I like had five songs that you're now gonna hear so it was it was really it was a cool moment mm-hmm. it's like okay well I'll see you later like go to California I don't care where you're going I don't know what you're there <laughs> for but I'll see you later like yeah, yeah. I'll there, I'll see you later well it's all just it's super funny but they they're they're very supportive and I, mm-hmm. I love my friends with that Mm -hmm. and like in terms of the album and music like do you have any more music coming out this year that we can like tune in like I said I like keeping secrets but I promise there will be more things um coming soon yeah I'm just not gonna gonna tell you much I'm not gonna tell you much (laughs) yeah there's definitely probably gonna be more California trips so right yes more California trips more music more things Mm -hmm. more heartbreaks Mm. and so to switch like this topic like you in terms of acting and stuff yeah. like that like last year you voiced Miriam in Pixar's film Turning Red which is an amazing film and like how would you describe your character in the film and the film itself if no one that's ever seen it okay to no one that's ever seen it it's ah oh, oh, this is so hard um Turning Red is kind of like a little coming of age with a hint of magical Pixar-ness. And I think it's really cool because it's very cultural. Like we see a lot of like Asian culture throughout it. Um, And I think that that's amazing. It was amazing to be part of such a cast in um, a film that was so like important to so many people. And I think that was that was really cool. That's what made it so special. But Miriam, on the other hand, she's kind of like the token BFF, like very fun, always knows how to have a good time. Um, Not too different from me, very outgoing, loves her friends. Um, And she's just, she cares so much for people. And I think, I like to think that I like take something out of every character that I play. Um, And I think it's just the kindness and the forgiveness that she brought to the movie is just really special and not something that you can find very easily. Mm -hmm. Is it on Disney Plus or where can you find the movie? Yes, it's on Disney Plus. I know that for sure. I think no, it 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 was not in theaters. I think it's only on Disney Plus. Ooh, and like <laughs> in in Turning Red, you act you voice acted alongside Sandra O, oh, which is such an amazing actress. Like I watched her in Grey's Anatomy. Oh. She's terrific. Like, did you get to meet her while working on a film? Okay, not while working on the film because all of it was actually, all the filming and recording process was all during COVID. So I recorded the entire movie kind of in solitude in my closet on FaceTime with Domi, the director, and just kind of did that for a whole year because I couldn't go anywhere. Um, So I didn't meet, I didn't talk to anybody except for Domi and Lindsay, the director and the producer. Um, And then when they flew me out to California, like literally a year ago today. It's oh, really? Kind of- like on the date? Yeah, today was the premiere and the everything. So they flew me out and I had press in the morning and I was super groggy. This is like my first huge um, like red carpet, like press, like we're going Buzzfeed. Like it was, it was really intense, but I went out with it. Like I had an amazing makeup artist who kind of like talked me through everything. Um, and then I kind of got like rushed into the room for press. I'm just like sitting there on my phone. And then all of a sudden, um, somebody like grabs my knee and I'm like, hi. And I like look up from my phone and it's Sandra O. She's like, oh my God, like you're Ava Morse. And I'm like, oh my God, you're Sandra O. Like it was, it was, it was really cool. She's like, you did such an amazing thing on the movie. Like, congratulations. I'm like, you're you, like I'm a huge fan, but she was, she was really intimidating. Like I was, I thought she was going to be kind of like, I don't know. I don't know, like not very bubbly but she was so bubbly so much fun she she's an incredible actress and like just the way she like poises herself and like the energy shift when she like walks in the room is is crazy it's she's amazing mm-hmm. like did you like watch um any of her, like roles like or tv shows before like you like worked with her before i worked with her not intentionally i mean i watched Grey's anatomy and like that's that's pretty much it but um 
not in preparation for like meeting her, I guess, but um, also with um, Mayatri Ramakushin, who voices another one of the friends, like I had seen Never Have I Ever and I've seen like all that. So I like knew them from everywhere. So it was kind of cool to like actually meet them and be like almost equal to them in a way. Cause they were like, oh yeah, hey, we're in the same movie. And I'm like, Mm -mm. I've been watching you for years. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah, it's like so weird. But it's like when I watch, like the only thing I watch is Sandra always Grey's Anatomy because I'm a huge Grey's Anatomy fan. And like when like with being an interviewer, like when you interview some like your favorite artists or celebrities or whatever it is, you're like, how am I talking to someone that I grew up watching or listening to? Like this yeah. could be real. It's it was it was weird, and the fact that she touched my knee was really scary but I was like thank you like I I have I didn't wash that knee for a week I'm kidding oh, I'm, 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 that's literally <laughs> what I say when I be my first celebrity and he touches me or whatever happens I'm like I'm not getting a shower for a week yeah. like this is not yeah. happening I'm not I'm not washing myself it was, it was it seem, like dramatic but it's like it's true like you know like you don't want to do anything with that I think the surrealist moment for me like Sandra Oh was crazy my aunt, everyone was crazy but was when I realized that Billie Eilish was actually sitting behind me at the movie premiere, like when we went Ooh. in to watch the movie. She was just like casually behind me and I was just like, oh my gosh, like that's insane. Like, did you yeah. talk to her or anything? I, I did, I, I actually, she actually talked to me first was so I, I was like ushered in because I was late and I was <laughs> at, at movie premieres it's funny they have like snack tables before you walk in and you can like grab all the snacks you want so I was like okay so I like had like four bags of Twizzlers and I was like being ushered into my seat and then all of a sudden I hear like I love your hair and I'm like thank you and it was really stylish and I was like oh my god and I was like I'm a huge fan like my name's Ava like I voice Miriam and she's like oh my god like you did so good and I was like oh my god and then I got a picture with her which was which was crazy and that's been like my lock screen for like ever oh my god that's actually insane like to actually have like a big singer like do that like that's absolutely crazy as a singer too well because I mean I don't know I guess at the movie premiere like it was kind of like acting like that was kind of acting realm like I didn't want to be like listen to my music like <laughs> like so I was just kind of like this is so sick like she's one of my biggest idols and she was so nice like oh it's mm, like, it so nice yeah like like every story I hear of Billie Eilish like it's like she seems like she's the sweetest person on her super chill she's oh ugh. I relive that moment every day <laughs> like they're literally living some in my, like everyone's stream right there man like it was, it was pretty surreal yeah and like the last like question that I basically have for you is like what is some advice for upcoming singer songwriters and actors that kind of want to make it out or want to kind of like get seen or heard yeah honestly I think the hardest thing that I encountered and I mean I still struggle with today is genuinely just putting yourself out there and not caring what people think of you what people have to say because in the long run it genuinely does not matter mm -hmm. if anything by letting that prevent you from like actually going for what you want it's, it's just setting you back like because there are people that are out there and are your competition and are doing like more things that you ever could and the only thing that's holding you back is yourself it's just like why do that like who cares what people have to say like mm, like comment, comment type thing yeah exactly like that was like me as well it's like I was so scared of putting myself out there and like being seen because I was such a shy kid and mm -hmm. I was like I don't want to take up space like why should I put myself out there if I'm shy but then like if you put yourself out there like you get more known in what you do. Like you, it's never too late to put yourself out there. Like I was like 14 years old when I first started this whole thing and started putting myself out there. Like it's literally never too late. No, it never is. And I mean, I what I actually went into like this little like depression cocoon of being like, I don't want to put out any more music before Loveless. Cause I I had put out an EP before when I was like 13. Um 
And I was just getting like, I would go to school and people would be like, ha ha, like playing my song. And I was just like, stay focused, stay focused. And I kind of like, I let it get to me. And I was just kind of like, damn, like, I don't, this sucks. Like, I don't want to do this. I would rather just be a normal kid. And then I was like, you know what? No, I don't. Like, what am I saying? I don't care what any of these people have to say. And then so hence Loveless was born. Like it was, it's, that's why I, that's another reason why it means so much to me because it's kind of what got me out of that kind of hole of being like, I'm scared and I don't want to do this because I care so much about what people have to say, but it, music is so amazing and acting as well in the way that it touches people. Like it genuinely does people music has an effect over people unlike nothing else and being able to provide something like that to somebody is just a beautiful thing and that's why i do it so it's like if you don't like it then it's just not for you your comment is only giving me more views like i don't care what you have to say like yeah. it's it's a win-win no matter what yeah like i like what he's like said there because like even though like you want don't want to like think like oh my god i don't want to do this anymore like you probably are still going to do it even though you're facing self-doubt like mm -hmm. i had like when i first like after a couple months of doing this like i like i was like oh i'm not getting views like why am i still doing this like if i'm not getting as much interviews as i am like it should be like why am i still doing this but then like it doesn't matter how many views you get or people that make fun of you. Like, I have gotten people text me like, okay, well, I love your podcast and everything, blah, blah, blah. But then, like, if you get those messages and if you see people come on your post and be like, oh, this podcast is horrible or whatever, your music is horrible. Like, you said, like, you get to more views. Like, you, you just, like, you, you rather make, make, put someone down than, than put, like, to make yourself feel better than anything. And I mean, if anything, if all these, I had a, I actually, I had a video go viral kind of a couple of weeks ago and it was, it was literally like, like six, like viral, viral, 6 million views. And all of it was hate. Like it was a video of me and my mom. And it was like a joke about how she wasn't letting me go to the Oscars or whatever, but it was completely a joke. Like I wasn't even invited to the Oscars. I was just nominated. Like it was not like anything personal. And everyone was like, your mom is so dumb. Like everything was like crazy, but I'm like, here's 6 million views on a TikTok. Meanwhile, all the streams on my music are going up. So talk as much like bad things as you want because I'm still winning. So it's like, yeah. everything's a win. <laughs> yeah, like seriously, everything's a win. Like if you go keep hating, like there's 6 million views and the point thing is people are seeing my music my and promoting myself. Like that's the best part of it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> And, like, with promoting yourself, like, it's such, like, a best thing. Because if you post a reel and goes viral, you're like, good for myself. Like, no one's getting that many views. Like, that's something to pat on your back for. You're set. And, I mean, I'm 17. I love TikTok. I am I love making videos of myself and staring at myself all day long. Like, it's, it's a great time. So, like, it doesn't even feel like work. Mm -hmm. so yeah, exactly. Like, even with doing podcasts and journalism it does not feel like work even though it, it is work technically but it's like it doesn't feel like it if you love it so much I yeah feel. yeah for sure it's and like passion that drives it yeah exactly and like I just want to thank you so much for joining and taking the time I love chatting and yeah just keep up the great work and can't wait to see what you do this year and just thank you so much for joining and thank you everyone for listening and stay tuned for next episode thank you so much Ava for joining Thank you for having me. Of course. Bye. Bye.